and this is Get Back to Work, a series in which I talk on a random subject while working. In this case, I'm working by playing Fishing Simulator, Ultimate, Ultimate, beg your pardon, Fishing Simulator Part 2. Uh, and here we are. I don't know why I put this on the list, but I've got it. And, uh, and therefore, here you are. There's me rod. Here's a lake. Let's get to fishing. occurred to me there for a moment that I've, I've played this once I played for like an hour or so uh, and uh, I found it I found it quite relaxing uh, and uh, and I went this doesn't feel familiar at all um, uh, and, uh, and and I went oh I know I was playing it on controller so I went and got the controller and I went no I wasn't <laughs> there you go no funny story anyway today's topic of conversation comes to you courtesy of Four Leaf who, uh, who, who has asked the following uh, I want uh, you to talk about the underground waste, uh, waste, <clears throat> I'll start again. I want you to talk about the human waste ground that is Matthew McConaughey. I mean, he plays the same part constantly. His best films are the ones where he's only in them ever so slightly. He's only in them very little, uh, but he keeps getting work. While people like Nick Cage faded off and now take anything they can get. Uh, why did it happen? Who's responsible for this? And why did we stand idly by and let it happen? Well, there's a, there's a lot to unpick in there. And uh, I mean, fishing's not going great. Hang on, let's uh, let's wind in. That's it. And then you do that to switch. That's what we want. Right, okay, so switch that. Uh, I'm just adjusting the speed of me reeling, you see. Because uh, this, this particular bait that I'm using should not be flying straight. It should be It should be sinking a bit. There you go. That's it. See when it's it's over on the it's over on the right side of the screen. When it's green, it means it is tempting for Johnny Fish and his friends. I don't, and I just yep. Come on, come on. No, I think I blew that one. I wasn't concentrating. Uh, right, we'll wheel in and then we'll uh, we'll go again. Uh, right, and hoink it. There you go. Right, let's go. I know I've I've put up a picture of uh, of Mr. McConaughey on the uh, on the screen there, uh, for those of you not familiar with uh, with the gentleman in question. He is effectively uh, the professional Texan. Uh, he's he is Texan, and therefore he plays a Texan in in most of the uh, most of the gigs that he gets. I've got quite low drag on this, which should be fine. Uh, how far out is it? Oh, 23 meters. This is working great. So you just want to you want to wheel it ever so slightly, keep it in the green. You see, if it if it's no longer green, it doesn't look like a fish. Yeah, wait for it. Wait, there we go. <laughs> Get on! I've got him! 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 Right. Okay. There's no stress on here at all. Let's wheel him in a bit faster. This is going to be a tiddler. Yeah. Yeah. And fishy. Is it? Uh, yeah, there you go. Caught one. That's rubbish. Uh, we'll release that, please. Thank you. Yeah, I don't need. I don't need one of those f filthing up my net. Anyway, we caught one. Right, let's go. And, let's go and peruse for something a little bit more uh, more interesting. Right, Matthew McConaughey. Well, firstly, uh, his uh, his career was largely oriented around the romantic comedy uh, for the longest time. Um, and that was that was fine. It was it was perfectly good as the uh, as the the good looking southern drawling uh, romantic male lead in a vehicle style movie in which he was quite often the foil to the female lead who was the bigger star. Okay, nothing wrong with that in the slightest. He was doing good works, uh, getting getting on with that. And I can't remember which came first. I think it's Dallas Buyers Club that was his first serious role. He'd done stuff like Mud, which was semi-serious, which got him to be a little bit more brooding. Uh, but after seeing him in Dallas Buyers Club, uh, which is about uh, the early days of, of HIV breaking out uh, in Dallas, perhaps unsurprisingly, um, and he's a, he's, a, he's a rodeo guy. Uh, a, ro a rodeo guy. I was going to say rodeo jockey. No, that's is he's an amateur rodeo star. What's a rodeoist called? What is a cowboy? Maybe. That well, could be. Anyway, he is a professional cowboy. Um, and uh, 
uh, straight professional cowboy, and he and he's uh, you know he is surprised as anything because it's the early days of HIV when it was it was rumoured to be something that only affected gay people, and uh, and so he he goes through the the series of denial before figuring out that uh, that actually the medication they're giving him is rotten uh, and is is doing more harm than good, and he makes bezzy mates. He's homophobic to start with as well, makes bezzy mates. Uh, with a, uh, I'm going to say transvestite, but it could be transsexual, um, uh, gay fella. Oh no, hold on, wait, 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 played by Jared Leto. Um, and uh, it, it's all round a good movie, but he basically becomes an expert in, uh, uh, in HIV medication. And I think I snapped my line there. Right, let's bring out the next rod. Uh, otherwise, I've got to set that one up. This, this one's a good bendy rod, this one. We've got a, we've got a chunk of bread on the end of it. Good. This is not the best area of the lake for actually tracking stuff. Usually you can see, you know, a little splosh on the top where stuff's going on. Anyway, I've seen Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, Matthew McConaughey got a, got a pass from me as this is a dude who can actually act. Uh, it was very good. He lost a heck of a lot of weight for the part. And, uh, and it's a very good movie. Uh, I recommend it. It's not, it's not a comedy. Okay. I mean, it's got the kind of, you know, gallows humour that you would expect on occasion. But fundamentally, not a comedy. It's a, it's a good bit of history. All right, anyway, moving on. Um, he then went and did Interstellar. Actually, around that time, he would have had his, his small part in The Wolf of Wall Street, which I know loads of people have watched. Um, it's, a, it's an endearing role, that one. It, or it's an iconic role, even though it only lasts for about five minutes. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was about the same time because he's obviously still underweight when he's playing the role in uh, uh, in Wolf of Wall Street. Um, he then went on and did Interstellar. And I know a lot of people rate Interstellar, but for my money, Interstellar is boring. Uh, it's very boring. Lots of people got incredibly excited about Hans Zimmer's score. And you kind of go, yeah, but I mean, don't get me started on Hans Zimmer, okay? All right? Because he's a hack. That's all he is. He's a hack. He's not very good. And uh, and all he did was tootle around on a pipe organ for Interstellar. And frankly, it's bobbins. Um, yeah. No, I know. No, people are going to argue with me on that one. But uh, but trust me, Hans Zimmer, nah. Nah, he might be the most worky, worky, work, work composer in Hollywood. Uh, but that doesn't make him good. And also, all his best stuff was the stuff he wrote collaboratively. And so when I say wrote, what I mean is someone else wrote it. Yeah. All right. Batman, for example. That wasn't him. Uh, anyway, I digress. So that's Matthew McConaughey. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with him. I get people that you, don't, you just don't like. Um, uh, I'm going to... I'll, I'll point one out for you. Jodie Foster, right? I'll watch Jodie Foster movies all day long. I have seen interviews with Jodie Foster, and she is perfectly charming and lovely. Uh, and uh, and she is a very, very talented actress. But for no reason whatsoever, I just don't like her. Um, and it's not because, you know, uh, characters that she's played are demonised or anything like that. I just don't like her. And I couldn't tell you why. She's very talented, and she's very charming, and she's very intelligent, and a lot of the things that I find appealing in people, but for some reason, just don't like her. I know. Yeah. And the opposite was true of, uh, of Keira, Keira Knightley, right? Couldn't stand Keira Knightley initially. Uh, and then I saw an interview with her, and I went, oh, she's perfectly lovely. She's wooden as anything in every single part she ever has. Ah, so she's not very good at the job, but what a lovely, what a lovely person. Yeah, no, I know. It's there's no there's no rhyme or reason to it. Right, let's let's ping this back out again. What did you just do? That wasn't what I wanted at all. In fact, I'm not entirely sure this this float operation that we got going on here is is wise. No, you just twanged that out. Come on, bring it back in. Right, and then give it a good old oh, hoik. Give it a give it a monster hoik on this one. I tell you, when you're casting in this. I'm not catching very much because my, my primary rod, I, I broke the line on it. Um, it goes a lot further than you think it will. Oh, yeah. Also, I don't know I don't know if this bait is any good or not. Yeah. 
I bought it recently, see the bait, and and I I don't know if it's if it's any cop in the slightest. Let's talk Nick Cage. Right. Well, so firstly, Nick Cage is mad, um, likably mad, but he's you know he's 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 out there, man. He's out there. Now I'm going off second-hand information here, so uh, so anything defamatory that I'm about to say is only based off my misrememberings of stuff that I've heard. Um, however, I think that based on the memory that I that I have of what I've read, is uh, Nick Cage basically lost all his money because he got into a, a spot of hot water combinationally with the Inland Revenue Service and some uh, some investments that were unwise and it wiped him out and as a result he had to just uh, it, uh, it's only recently that he's actually been able to break even again which is why he's been taking on every last piece of work uh that he could get his hands on this rod's not doing it for me no it's not right wheel it in i think i think rod three has uh, has got my uh, has got my regular setup on it right okay try it all right, switch. The set is incomplete. Oh, bum. Right, okay. In which case, we're definitely going to go buy more equipment. Uh, right, set number one. Yeah, I know it's incomplete. Uh, I want the uh, the feeder master. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally want that. Yep. Uh, with the barracuda and the mono clear. Yeah. Uh, I don't need a leader. No. I don't need a float. No. I want one of these little hook bad boys. One of these. <clears throat> Slap it on there. That's the ticket. Right, we'll, we'll set up number three while we're at it. Rods, give me unavailable. I, I haven't got any more rods left. I've only got two sets. Oh, okay, fair play. All right. Well, you know what? We'll set up rod number two with the same. We'll keep the uh, the Barracuda 2001 GN. It's it's a banger, after all. Uh, and then we'll go with... Uh, I thought I had... I thought I had some laws available. Lures. It's a tricky word, that one. L-U-R-E-S. Lures. See? It, the pronunciation is a, is a, it's a tough one. Uh, can I remove that? I don't want to use a float. I don't want to use, I don't want a float rod. Take the leader off? No, no, no. I'm not sure how you do. Maybe set two has to have it. Maybe you can reset set two. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, give me the tele rod. Yep. The wiggler. Yeah. Give me the barracuda. That's no, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Real, I'll take uh, whatever filament I've got on offer, and then I don't want to float. I don't want to float. I do not want to float. I don't want a leader particularly either. Well, you, my friend, are fresh out of luck. Oh well, stuff you then. I uh, will use the five pound lead. There you go. That's it. And then uh, we'll use the uh, the old Bobatech. Yes, that's a wise choice. Yeah, I want one of them. Yep, use that. Nice. And then some baubles. Perfect. Right. And on the end of that, we'll put a hook. Yeah. The shop's full of other gubbins that you can slap all over. There's a bang on earthworm on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. There you go. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. Right. It's all hooked up. Stuff the bread. The bread was doing nothing for me. Wang this out there. Let's see what we get. Uh, also, drop the speed of the reeling. Yeah, yeah. See, now, I'm pretty certain with float fishing, you just leave it there until the float goes bananas, and then you go, wait. <clears throat> so let's talk Nick Cage. So the reason he's been taking such bad movies, or such eclectic movies, with the uh, uh, the exception, maybe, of that which was tailor-made for him, which is the unbearable difficulty of being brilliant, or whatever it's called, um, the latest one, where superfan drug dealer... Oh, yeah, catch! Go on, have we got a man on? No, no, now! Yes! All right, the worm has paid off, richly. All right, now you'll see at the bottom there are three gauges, right? And what we are aiming to do is, uh, is keep them in the white. If they go towards the red, it means that I'm putting too much stress on the line and it's likely to bust. That is what I've been able to ascertain so far, but this is only a nipper. So this shouldn't be a price. Actually, it's a little bit bigger than I was anticipating. Let's have a look at what we've got here. It's a yellow perch, isn't it? What's it worth? Three quid. Bang in. Put it in the bag. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's, uh, let's see if we can't get something larger. The biggest thing I've, I've hauled in so far is like a three pound something or other. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, 
true facts. Now, obviously, you need more gear uh, to uh, to pull in the best stuff. Hello, what's going on here? Have I have I not cast correctly there? Given that your given that your float seems to be sat there, I would say arguably yes. All right, wheel it in. That's gone wrong. I'll do it again, but but potentially better. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Wheel it in, wheel it in, wheel it in, wheel it in. There we go. Right, yeah, come in. Right. Do we need to? No, we don't need to worry about that. All right, now. Cast it out a good distance. Let's go for this clock tower over there. And Bob's your uncle. All right. And that's gone a nice 27 metres. Just so uh, let's bring it into about 20. I feel good about 20. You can target fish, you see, when you see them. You can target them. And there's an underwater camera, which is on you. Yeah. So you can see the business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I don't like the underwater camera. You see, I prefer to uh, to just work on my uh, on my expertise at watching the line. Or rather, the heads-up display that is showing me what's what. There. See, there's some, there's some jokers over there. All right, let's, let's keep the mystery fresh. So, yeah. Uh... Yeah, Nick Cage should never have had a career. He's he's forever been wooden, and I include Wild at Heart, um, where he's just manic. With the exception, there's one exception, obviously, because there's always an exception, and that is Leaving Las Vegas. Um, the opening five minutes of Leaving Las Vegas is stunning, absolutely stunning. He is he puts in such a good performance. He's basically uh, a bloke who's lost everything. His wife's left him. He's an alcoholic. Uh, and his alcoholism has got the better of him. Uh, and uh, his wife's left him. He's lost pretty much everything. And so he decides to go to Las Vegas uh, to uh, to drink himself to death. It's not a comedy. Um, yeah, come on. In you come. Yes, bruv. All right. It's only another tiddler. Yeah, I know, but we got it straight away. Oh, look at that. Oh, the yellow per perch. They can't get enough of the worms. Well, I fooled you well and proper, son. Right, get in the bag. Two quid, worth it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I'm playing as Dirk Shafter, incidentally, just in case you're wondering what character we're we're performing as today. Uh yeah, leaving Las Vegas, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And then he meets up with uh uh with down on her luck um uh, prostitute, Elizabeth Shue. And the two of them form a, an uneasy relationship and she s decides to stick with him while he drinks himself to death. Did I mention it wasn't a comedy? Because it isn't. No. Not a lot of laughs in there, but a terrific performance from Nick Cage. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I haven't seen him put in a good performance in anything. He's been Nick Cage in everything. And therefore, you do know what you're going to get. Um, I think Gone in 60 Seconds is particularly hilarious. Not least of all because the bad guy is called The Carpenter. Why is he called The Carpenter? Because he makes things using carpentry <laughs> it's, it's Christopher Eccleston as well who's a proper good actor and you kind of go dude you decided to go to Hollywood and this is the best you could get and at the end of it there's a big showdown between the two of them. you've seen it right you've seen the movie there's a big showdown between the two of them and Nick Cage is threatening to smash a chair and he goes no don't smash the chair <laughs> it's so stupid it's utterly utterly stupid fun movie fun fun movie um yeah, and Nick Cage makes a lot of fun movies. Um, he wasn't in the, the the funnest of the fun movies. That was Marky Mark and his Funky Bunch. Um, but I, it's the parallel between Knowing, right? The movie Knowing, where uh, where the world's going to end and people have been predicting it. And I mean, that's silly. That's a silly movie. The one where he can see into the future by thirty seconds or whatever it is. That's that's quite funny as well. Um, uh, what's that? But no, the one I was describing, the happening, where where the planets decide to kill everybody, that's hilariously bad. That's uh, M Night Shyamalan after he's gone well off the reservation. Uh, he rather believed his own hype a little bit too much there. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a bad film. Bad film. Um, yeah, it's a really, it's a truly awful film. Knowing is a pretty bad film as well. Uh, think of other Nick Cage movies. Oh, what's the one where he's an Apache pilot? That's awful. Um, that was quite early on as well. That was that was just after Wild at Heart. 
Uh, Wild at Heart. He, it's, I mean, it's a David Lynch movie, right? So the, the thing with David Lynch is everything he does, he plays to exaggerations. He exaggerates the characters to uh, an incredibly high degree. The Yellow Perch, man. You know what? You're the smallest of the three I've had so far. Go back to the wild. I care not for you, Perch, yellow or otherwise. Uh, let's switch out the rod. Go back to all traditional here. And then, actually, we'll put that away as well. I'm going for a meander. Uh, let's go see if we can find somewhere a little bit more lively, a little bit more up there. Uh, fed up a perch. Stuffed perch. No. I'm all up there. I'm done with perch. Uh, <clears throat> but Nick Cage got his, got, his, uh, got his start there because he's, uh, he's Francis Ford Coppola's nephew. And, the, and therefore he got the gig out of a good, healthy dose of nepotism. Now, I'm fine with that. Good, healthy doses of nepotism are, after all, what gifted the world Drew Barrymore. Um, but at the same time, and uh, the Fonders, let's not forget the Fonders, uh, but uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, and, and Liza Minnelli. And you can argue that all of them, they're talented in their own right. Uh, but Nick Cage is, is a caricature, he's, a, he's an exaggeration, he's, um, uh, he's a puppet show. And, uh, and the fact is that he's, a, he's quite a watchable puppet show. Um, uh, the face-off, incidentally, is rubbish. All right? It's complete rubbish. Because on the one hand, you've got charisma vacuum John Travolta, whose career was reignited by Quentin Tarantino, was quite rightly dead. Um, he's no Patrick flipping Swayze, I'll give you that for nothing. Now, Patrick Swayze, not a great actor, but such charisma, holy mackerel, oh my goodness me. Patrick Swizzle was, uh, uh, sorry, that's what herself calls him, um, uh, what, a, what a charismatic man, uh, and uh, yeah, just, no, 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 I've got all the time in the world for Patrick Swizzle, sadly no longer with us. Um, but, uh, but such is the case of, of people who should still be with us, is sometimes they're not. Yeah, Mr. Swizzle, one of them. <clears throat> and, uh, he, he sits there with Christopher Reeve, right? Now, Christopher Reeve actually can act. He's, I've seen him in enough, uh, enough things to... Uh, he, I mean, he's dead now as well. Um, but, uh, but Christopher Reeve could act when he was alive. Uh, but he is Superman. And always will be. Yeah. No one did Superman better than Christopher Reeve. And I like whoever the latest one is. Brandon Routh. No, that was the previous one. Who's the latest one? Oh, uh, Hen Henry Cavill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, you've got, you got to decrease your drag. Decrease your drag. Get the drag down. It's a big one. Uh, yeah, we go. There we go. Right. Hoik, hoik, hoik. He's coming straight for us. If we're lucky, we won't have to fight. No, we're going to be fighting him. Okay. All right. All right. Wait for him. Wait for him to ease off a bit. Wait for him to ease off a bit. Maybe drop the drag a little bit. No, drop the drag a little bit. There we go. Yeah. This is going to be a. This is going to be a good. Just give it up. Let's see if that. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to be here for a minute, unless I snap the line, which I don't want to do. See, unless you put more drag on the line, you can't actually bring him in, and he's just going to get away from you. You have to wait for for, for the mood to take him. Come on, come in here. Come on. Get chip. Get. Come on. Wow, I'm going to put you in my fish tank. That's, that's part of the game. Is you can take the fish that you've caught, stick them in your fish tank, and they'll breed and uh, and grow and, and what have you. And then you go, ah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, you'll see it's getting further away because I haven't got enough drag on the line. And the trick is you drop the drag down when he's pulling and then increase the drag to hoik him in. In fact, I might up my speed a smidge. Just give it about 60% and then switch over the drag. And then up that to... There you go, there you go. Now, pull, 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 pull. Stop pulling. And drag off. Right. Okay. Yeah. Hey! Come on, son. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got quite a lot of the fight out of him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. This is the fun bit, incidentally. Actually, there's quite a lot of fun bits about this. I mean, uh, I... I I work partially on a fishing game, and uh, and that's quite good fun from time to time. But but what I what I've been looking for is one that that you know really uh, really gets the sense of what have I got? Where where is it? 
Where's it gone? Where, where's my fish? It's a salmon. It's uh, it's five and a half quid's worth. Where's, where, I want to see it. Oh, you have. You know, it's only early access, so the fish is missing. I am left disappointed by not being able to see me salmon. Oh, dear. There we go. Right, we've been around the houses, but I think, Four Leaf, I've answered your question. And that is, McConaughey's fine. He fulfills a role. It doesn't matter that he's the same in everything. The same can be said of your hero, Mr. Nicholas Cage. Um, uh, except he's not, a, he's not a caricature. But what he has shown, and, uh, and Nick Cage is true of this as well, is he has shown the capability to provide a, de a deep and nuanced performance. <laughs> I know words. Uh, and uh, and therefore, um, he needs to do it again. I know I haven't seen the new movie, which is where he's doing a send up of himself. But every movie he ever does is a send up of himself, and therein lies the problem. It's uh, you can't you can't be uh, self deprecating if that's all you ever do. Yeah. Ooh, hey, ooh, ah, there we go. We got another one on, and and this one might be a little bit more feeble. Yeah. Up the drag. There we go. Yeah, let's get this one in. Put it in the bag. Call it a day. I've been Colonel Fire, everybody. Uh, this video is brought to you courtesy of Get Back to Work, a video series in which you decide what I'm doing. doing the hokey coke. It's a grass pickerel, and it's worth 55 cents. Back to the wild for you, my friend. Yes. Uh, yeah, you call the topic of discussion. You decide which game I'm going to be playing at the same time from a list that I have provided. You can find that list and get your own request in by heading to wizio.com slash colonel underscore failure. I look forward to seeing your request. I've got quite a few requests in the bag at the moment. And I'm, and I'm working my way through them in the way that I am doing at the moment. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch up with you very soon. Cheerio.